just to make sure it's not going into
USF. At this time, we ask you to please silence your cell phones. We also remind you that the use of recording devices and flash photography are strictly prohibited in the hall. In the event of an emergency, exits are located to your left and right sides in the concert hall. If you must leave this performance at any time, please wait for a member of the house staff to guide you back to your seat. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the performance. of his former students and friends, many of uh, who are here today. So if you're a part of that, thank you very much. Um, we have tried very hard to keep today's program a secret from Dr. Wiedrich, and so he's about to be, he's going in this about as blind as most everybody else. But I know we've got a big crowd watching us online. Welcome, uh, and just importantly, thank you for being here. This is a big deal, and we appreciate your presence. We're gonna start today with a piece called Tuber Suite. And uh, Tuber Suite is based on folk songs from Michigan. And I heard this uh, about four years ago, and I thought, that is, that is a really cool piece. When would I ever need to play a piece of folk songs from Michigan? Well, Dr. Wiedrich's from Michigan, so this worked out really, really well. And uh, to conduct Tuber Suite, uh, Alfonso is going to come out. He is our doctoral um, teaching assistant. This is his final performance with the Wind Ensemble. So would you please welcome Alfonso Kimbrough and Tuber Suite.
Dearest Dr. Wiedrich, I want to wish you so much of a happy retirement in this next chapter. Thank you for everything. That word is so small. You've given me a career, you've given me a profession, but most of all, a love for artistry, musicianship, and every individual. Thank you for leading all of us and for leaving your legacy and letting me be a small part of that. Best wishes, so much love. Thanks, Doc. I graduated here of uh, BM class of 2014 with a degree in bassoon performance and music composition. And this actually feels like a very full circle moment because for all eight semesters, I played in uh, wind ensemble, as one does when you're a bassoonist and in high demand. And it's, you know, it's wonderful to see the same ensemble that I played in. I also played in orchestra with Dr. Wiedrich, and that in many ways also feels like a full circle moment. Okay. So I want to make this as quick as possible, but I would love to give a little spiel because um, I think I speak for countless students that have come through USF and have gotten to play under Dr. Wiedrich in saying that he not only taught us how to be better musicians, but better people. Um, he challenged us in many ways, and uh, for that, we've grown so much. So um, when I was finishing my senior year of high school, I remember coming to USF on a Friday of spring break. I had already gotten accepted, and I was trying to determine which school that I actually wanted to go to. Um, so we were in the old building, if any of you remember that, with the pill and uh, the as asbestos and things like that. And um, on Fridays, the, every ensemble has a rehearsal, so they were all kind of changing over, and I sat in the observation deck, and Dr. Wiedrich was conducting Symphony Fantastique. And I saw four bassoons in one place at one time, which I had never seen before. And I was just like, I need to study here, and I need to play under this guy. <laughs> um, so that was the beginning of the musical journey, um, 14 years ago, if my math is correct. And in that time, I got to play so many wonderful pieces with Dr. Wiedrich. I believe uh, he conducted us uh, the wind ensemble at Carnegie Hall. We got to do Mahler III with the Tampa Bay Master Chorale on this stage right here. Uh, Beethoven Seven, Tchaikovsky IV, I think Tristan and Isolde. And Facebook reminded me, uh, 10 years ago yesterday, so we're just barely one day off, uh, we did Rite of Spring right here on this stage. Um, so these are some of the very wonderful memories that I have playing under Dr. Wiedrich, working with Dr. Wiedrich. And in writing this piece, Onward Grow, you can see a quote from the alma mater in the program notes. Um, you know, I was searching for text, I was searching for notes that I could kind of bake into my piece to give it this, um, I don't know, kind of like a scrapbook quality to it. So there are quotes from the alma mater that I kind of use to generate the piece, but it's really more of an abstract metaphor for perhaps Dr. Wiedrich's time here. Um, I consider the piece having four main components, the first one being this kind of seed germination genesis phase where there's a, um, all the notes of the melody of the alma mater and the kind of introduction happen and they grow into this big thing. And then um, the rapid growth phase is what I like to call the second section where you start with a low rumbling bass and everything is kind of growing upwards and starting to multiply and, you know, uh, spontaneously um, germinate. And then the third phase is where you'll hear another prominent quote of the alma mater. And I like to think of this as the garden that Dr. Wiedrich has planted, that he gets to look back and say, I did that. These are all of the lives that I touched. These are all of the, the flowers that I have made bloom. And the fourth section um, is kind of a regeneration of the previous material, um, but there's two parts to that. One is that, uh, you know, Dr. Wiedrich's legacy is not only the students that he's taught here, but it's all of the students that his students will go on to teach, and then their students will go on to teach and conduct and inspire. And also that there's kind of an um, open-ended question, or open-ended, I don't know, ending uh, for the piece, in that um, perhaps the best is yet to come. You know, there's so much more that Dr. Wiedrich has left to give us with music, and it's not gonna stop at USF and we're excited to see what he does. So, please welcome to the stage, Dr. Bill Wiedrich.
and I want to wish you a wonderful retirement and congratulations on an awesome career. Ever since we were little boys, I know that you had an amazing love for music, remembering listening to records as little boys, and unfortunately me coloring all your yellow records black with shoe polish, because I thought they should be black, to you going to the store with the dollar at Ben Franklin's and buying records while I would buy Matchbox cars, to getting involved in music as a youth with Mrs. Hagen, and then on to high school, college, and all of your mentors from Mrs. Hagen to Gustav Meyer, uh, and then on to a stellar career. Uh, highlight for me was watching you conduct at Carnegie Hall uh, but also uh, being amazed at uh, all the lives that you have affected and have given not only expertise but a joy for music that you have shared with so many people, all of your colleagues, students, and audiences. Uh, well deserved congratulations, Bill. Love you. First time he's ever said anything nice about me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> my dear friend Matt McCutcheon asked me to say a couple words about the next piece. Um, and unfortunately, you guys have heard this already, so I won't know. Um, Frank to Kelly originally wrote an American elegy in memory of those who lost their lives tragically at the Columbine High School shooting in 1999 and to honor the survivors. But the USF Wind Ensemble actually has a little bit of history with this piece, too, and I'm just going to share that with you. Some of you may be in the audience who experienced this. Uh, it was a beautiful Tuesday morning, September 11, 2001, and in the old building that Susanna mentioned earlier, um, the Wind Ensemble used to rehearse at 10 o'clock in the morning, and so by then we had pretty much all heard about planes hitting the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York, and a plane hitting the Pentagon and a group of passengers bringing down the plane in Pennsylvania that was destined for the White House. And we were all in shock. The whole world was in shock. And as I was driving into school, I thought, my God, it's even weirder that, you know, the Iraqi War Center Command is Mattel Air Force Base. Are we next? Well, thank God we weren't. But as I arrived in the courtyard near the pill, again, that Susanna mentioned, I noticed that the wind ensemble were all standing outside. And I walked out of the car and I walked in and it was perfectly silent. No sound. Total quiet. And I walked up to them and they were standing there ashen white and they looked so frightened. And I thought, oh great, I scheduled the world's most difficult rehearsal today with one of the most difficult contemporary works for wind ensemble to raise in the rep. So they said, what do we do, Doc? And I said, well, let's go in and sit down and get unpacked. And they did, silently. And I thought, this is not going to work. But then all of a sudden, I remembered the previous Festival of Winds. There was a piece called An American Elegy that is brand new. Alan Murray, former director of dance at the University of Colorado, was the guest conductor. I believe his group premiered it, if I'm correct. And I thought, hmm. So I walked into the library next door, and I got it. I walked in the rehearsal hall. I passed it out, and they were looking at it kind of funny. I said, don't worry, we're just, we're just going to read something. I dropped the downbeat, and eight and a half minutes later, I turned around and looked, and there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Even the manly men in the low brass in the back <laughs> were wiping tears off of their cheeks. And I said, what do you guys want to do? And I said, can we play it again? I said, sure. So I got up, and I started it. And then all of a sudden I realized something very special was going to happen. It was going to be their moment. So I got off the podium and I just listened while they played it by themselves. It was one of the most poignant moments in my career, really, to watch folks do that. And when it was over, we all suddenly realized that we were so lucky to have each other. And we were lucky to have music. And that the power of making music transcended anything that words could have portrayed at that moment. And we all were fine. It was a really beautiful day. And unfortunately, not for the world. 
it's the american elegy that i and so many of us went on song remembers from twenty three years ago hold in our hearts this one on song and i hope you enjoy this afternoon an american elegy of frank kelly
Good evening, everybody. Hey, Bill. My name is John Madden. I'm an emeritus professor of music at Michigan State University. Uh, I was a band director there for almost three decades, and I had the privilege of following Bill Wiedrich in that position many, many years ago. Uh, Bill, I'm very uh, honored to be part of a, a celebration for you uh, this spring as uh, this final semester at USF unfolds for you. Uh, Bill is my, uh, my friend, he's my principal mentor. Uh, Bill is a confidant. Uh, Bill is a counselor. He's uh, that uh, and so many more things to me and I'm sure to many of you who are present tonight you know, the path of one's life is a unique, uh, winding, unpredictable road. And I was the lucky benefactor to have the path of my life cross with the path of his life back in 1982. I think about uh, the immense output uh, he's had in, in Tampa with uh, bands at USF and the orchestra, certainly. and the many students he's impacted, and of course his youth orchestra students as well. So I'm sure you'd agree with me that I'm a testament to that my life has been greater because of Bill's presence and his impact and his caring and uh, loving approach to teaching and conducting and making music. But I know that USF has been a greater place because of Bill Wiedrich's presence, uh, his contribution, his artistry, his musicianship. Uh, Bill, congratulations. Uh, your impact will never be forgotten at the University of South Florida, and uh, you have impacted many, many people who will always remember you. Thanks again for inviting me to be part of this and enjoy the celebration. This has been so much fun put together. Our next piece, uh, we have a former student of Bill's who is now a colleague of Bill's, Dr. Christina Adams, who is our viola professor, uh, is going to play a concerto with us entitled Love Among the Ruins, which is really, really beautiful. And would you please welcome Dr. Adams to the stage.
enjoy the lengthy list of folks offering notes to you of a job well done at the University of South Florida. They don't quite know it yet how much they'll miss you, but in time they'll remember the good old Weaver Carol. Hear then an anecdote from a longtime friend that only the two of us know about. Until now, Bill, I know you're shaking in your boots at this one, aren't you? Many years before Bill's time at USF, we went to Hawaii on a vacation together, just the two of us. So there we were, two nerdy conductors, sitting at a picnic table on Waikiki Beach and doing, what else? Studying the score. I don't remember what I was studying that trip, Bill. I'll bet you you as well. So for some, retirement means relaxation. For others, it means you can now send easily, no thank you. But for Bill, retirement means more time to study. Congratulations, dear friend. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for allowing me to present this wonderful piece with you. I'm Francesca Arno, and I'm the Flute Professor here, and I've been here a short six years. It's very short to have uh, dear Bill as my colleague, mentor, and friend, and I know that his tradition of being here is going to live on beyond uh, students, faculty here, and all of you who are listening out there and sharing this day with us. This wonderful piece is evidence of Bill's thirst to continue growing as a musician. He uh, realized some sketches that he had composed some time ago, and during that pandemic thing, spent some time taking walks and just getting back in touch with making music directly, and uh, he has shared this piece with us, and we are delighted to play this for you today, and thank you also for inviting us to occupy the Wind Ensemble stage. Uh, thank you so much, Matt, for sharing that. So I like to think of this piece, Incidentalis Number 1, as a bit of a snapshot of our beloved Dr. Wiedrich. Number 1, first movement, petite. His love of long lines, energy in the sounds, and expressiveness, lilting effervescence, and playfulness. Second movement, vocalese, soulful, passionate, introspective, yet magical. And the third, comique, enthusiasm, joy, full of life, and very clever. It's been such a short time for me, as I have mentioned, but I want you to know that you have transformed our lives and helped us look north, find our stars, to spread the joy of music making together. We carry you in our spirit and in our hearts forever.
Hey Bill. To everyone here today, my name is Mike Kaufman. And I'm Beth Kaufman. My friendship with Bill goes back to our days at Michigan State University. Bill, it's really hard to believe that you've arrived at this pivotal time in your life. That 17-year-old little drummer boy from the UP, eh? A freshman from Michigan State University Spartan Marching Band. It seems like yesterday when we took that spring break trip to Venice, Florida, along with Sarah McCoy. Seems like just yesterday when we had progressive dinners with Mike Seal, Henry Platt, Sarah McCoy, and Joe Moore. Seems like just yesterday when you coined a new phrase, Mozi Pozart. If, any, if anyone here has ever witnessed Bill's brain on Fast Forward, Mozi Pozart is the slang for a poster we have in our house that features mostly Mozart. So, Mozi Pozart. Seems like just yesterday when we watched you rise up the ranks in the MSU marching band, and then we watched you rise up the national ranks in the collegiate band world. Some from our MSU alma mater were just a little bit in shock when Bill essentially jumped ship and entered the doctoral conducting program with Bob Reynolds at our little sister school down the road in Ann Arbor. Somehow, everyone survived. And yet, many might not know that Dr. William Wiedrich, Bill to us, was actually the very first to complete the doctoral degree in conducting with Professor Reynolds at the University of Michigan. Billy, your talent is unmatched and your commitment to your students and to us, your many, many friends, has always been unwavering and lifelong. So, congratulations today on your final tech step around the track with your first great orchestra that you've guided all these years. No doubt, your baton will collect no dust and you'll be as busy or not as busy as you'd like to be. We hope to see you soon, Bill. With all our love to you, our good friend. Congratulations. Hi, Bill. It's Gusty, your composer friend of very long standing. I'm so grateful that Matthew invited me to make a short greeting to you. USF has been incredibly fortunate to have you for all these years, first leading the band and then, of course, the orchestra and everything else you do with all sorts of other orchestras too many to mention. Uh, it's really remarkable. You've changed the lives of so many people and you've changed my life. I feel incredibly grateful to you for all of our collaborations, past, present, and future. Your support of my work has meant really everything to me. I've learned so much from you. And I really just would like to say bravo you for being such a radiant, kind, generous, sincere, thoughtful, musical, elegant, and beautiful person. We all treasure you. And I know you're retiring from one job, but I know you're gonna keep doing many, many things, and we will continue to celebrate all that you're doing. Have a great night. Bye. I would now like to invite the composer of our next piece, Dr. Baljinder Sakhan. You're about to hear a world premiere by a world caliber composer, and he's going to tell you a little bit about it. Dr. Sakhan. Hi, thank you so much. Um, my name is Baljinder Sakhan. I taught here at USF. I was a colleague of Bill's, collaborator of Bill's, um, for almost a decade. I came here in 2010, and I taught here until 2019. I had the fortune of collaborating with Bill on several projects, um, all of which um, are still extremely important to me and have really propelled my career and my experiences as a composer and musician forward. Um, I had written a very long saxophone concerto, for example, that no, no orchestras in America seemed really interested in playing it. Showed it to Bill. Next thing you know, we had our North American premiere of the saxophone concerto, recorded it for an album, and there's countless stories like this that other composers have and that I have working with Bill. Um, when I was asked to compose a piece for this event, um, we said, said yes immediately, and one thing I thought about was when I first got to know Bill that I felt like we had a lot in common, that we had a kind of similar path as musicians. Um, 
of course bill has done more than i have bill's done it all bill's a rudimental snare drummer bill has marching band experience arranging conducting directing concert band experience orchestra experience bill's a composer and um i thought about all of those things and what an interesting path it is to go from playing rudimental snare drum to conducting a band to conducting an orchestra and working with strings um, i also started off as a percussionist and so i wanted to make a piece that sort of um, exhibited this path in some way a piece like what would it be like if there was a piece that started off as a rudimental snare drum piece and moved through the various experiences that bill's moved through as a musician um, how does it end should it end we don't know how it ends um, the title of the piece is ringing and it really has two two meanings one is that it's a sort of metaphor or reference to the creation of rings on a tree and i was thinking about these different experiences as different layers to Bill Wiedrich that continue to move outwards. The second meaning is that it refers to the ringing, uh, the ringing on of the teachings and the artistry of Bill Wiedrich um, that will continue to ring past the sort of double bar of your USF career. And so it's in that spirit that I compose this piece for Bill and for the USF um, ensemble here and please enjoy.
I know it's been a long concert, but if you'll indulge, indulge us one more, this one won't take very long. First, one final video. Hey Bill, it's Bob Reynolds. I just want to let you know how much I value you and our association, even though we haven't seen each other a lot. You still remain one of my closest people. And I want to congratulate you on a career well spent. You've made a big difference in every place you've been, especially the University of South Florida. So I hope in the future that we can sit down in my home office this time and talk about music and talk about life and I'll bring the coffee. Congratulations, Bill. About five weeks ago, I texted Bill and I said, hey, what's your favorite march? And he immediately texts back and he says, oh, it's one you probably never heard of. And I thought, come on, man, I've been teaching band for 30 years. I know the marches. He said, it's the Spartan. I thought, the heck of it. <laughs> no, never heard of the Spartan. So it turns out it's a march that Bill arranged when he was at Michigan State University. So I called up the directors of Michigan State University and said, by any chance, do you happen to have an arrangement of the Spartan arranged by Bill Wiedrich? And about 15 minutes later, I had it. So Bill, this is for you. With more snare drummers than you probably intended, that's okay. amazing. <laughs> Thank you. 